Hey gaming fans, so today I have a Monarch deck that I've been working on. Um, this deck is pretty much, I mean, pretty much the same as the way I used to always play it. Um, maybe one or two card changes here and there. Uh, the majority of this deck was obviously in the Monarch structure deck. And um, during its day, I mean, this was a pretty powerful deck. I think it could still somewhat hold up today. Um, but anyways, let's get to the deck. So the first one is uh, Ida... I guess that's how you say it. I always have a hard time with the Yu-Gi-Oh names. Uh, Ida, Ada, the Heavenly Squire. Um, this card's really cool. Um, if this card is normal, a special summon, you can special summon one monster with 800 uh, attack or def or 1,000 defense from your deck in defense position, except the uh, except itself. And if you do special summon, um, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. Now, that's a pretty common theme with, with the Monarchs. You pretty much have no extra deck with this deck, and you don't need one. And then if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished Monarch spell or traps, add it to your hand, um, which comes in handy later on as well. So your primary target with this guy would be the uh, the dark version, <laughs> Eidos of the Underworld Squire. Um, so if this card is normal or special summon, during the main phase, which you would summon with this guy, um, you could tribute summon one monster in addition to your normal summoner set. Um, so it just helps you to, to really pull off your uh, monarchs. And then you can banish this card from your uh, graveyard and target one monster with 800 attack or 1,000 defense in your graveyard, except Eidos himself, and special summon it in defense position. Also, you cannot special summon so uh, from the extra deck. Uh, so basically what it is, is he, he just provides you with another target for your monarchs. Uh, really cool. And the last of the monsters that you can actually normal summon in this deck, um, one Spell Striker. Um, I, th I don't know if I should go with one or two, uh, but it's just another card that you can special summon onto the field. All you have to do is uh, banish a spell card from your graveyard, and then, um, I mean, he does have, he can attack your opponent directly, and you take no battle damage from attacks involving this card, so uh, I guess he could absorb one attack, but... Primarily what you're going to do is you're, he's a warrior, so you, you could use cards like um, Reinforcements of the Army to search it out, and then you could banish Reinforcements, Special Summon him, and then you could, you got Tribute Fodder for your Monarch. So that's it pretty much for the cards that help bring out the Monarchs. Well, these aren't, I don't think these are all Monarchs, but... <laughs> so anyways, yeah, so for the Monarch, um, I have... Kurez, the light uh, monarch. Uh, I always liked this guy. I thought he was kind of fun. Uh, his only downside is he cannot attack during the turn he's normal or special summon, but that's because he has a cool effect that uh, he could blow up two cards, and then whoever's cards they are, the, that player draws two cards, uh, or cards equal to the amount of cards he exploded. So you can you can blow up himself, essentially, and draw one card if you want, or you can blow up two of your own useless cards, or in a pinch, you can blow up your opponent's stuff, um, even though they'll get two cards, you might get rid of something really, you know, crazy on the field. Um, I got some non-monarchs, which are kind of like monarchs, and uh, that's Majesty's Fiend. Uh, he cannot be special summoned, um, which is fine. Uh, monster effects cannot be activated. So this guy pretty much can shut down uh, your opponent if they rely heavily on monster effects, especially if they don't have any, re you know, any other cards to get rid of a monster. But there's also ways to protect them. So, and then I also play. This isn't a, isn't kind of like a monarch because his his defense is 1,200, which really sucks uh, because there's a lot of effects that deal with 24 and 1,000 defense. Uh, but anyways, he's kind of like he's a one tribute, uh, similar idea to Majesty's Fiend. He's Vanity's Fiend. Uh, this card cannot be special summoned, and while this card is on the field, neither player can special summon monsters. So it just really helps to stop against any kind of special summon crazy decks. Uh, this deck is pretty, you know, it works pretty slow, <laughs> essentially. Um, and then we get into the, well, kind of like the double tribute monsters. Uh, and I say kind of because you're never going to do that. Um, but that's uh, Aether the Heavenly Monarch, which is a 2800 attack, 1000 defense. Um, again, a lot of the uh, spells and stuff affect the, that type of attack and defense. Um, but essentially, you can tribute summon this card by tributing one tribute summon monster. So if there's a if there's like say this guy out on the field who's already been tribute summoned onto the field, you can tribute summon him, which is him. 
so you don't have to do two monsters. Um, but there's other cards in here that'll help too. Uh, if this card is tribute summoned, you could send two Monarch Spell or Trap cards with different names from your uh, hand or deck to the graveyard, and if you do special summon one monster with 2400 or more attack and a thousand defense. Um, so you can't take these guys because they cannot be special summoned, uh, neither of the Vanity's Fiend, but you can take cards like this guy, which is Erebus. So I'm playing two of these guys. He's kind of like the dark version of him. So you can pull that out, and then his effect is also during the end of your turn, you bounce it back to your hand. So you can, you know, use him or just bounce him back to your hand. You got a free card. Um, this guy also has another effect. Um, you can banish one Monarch Spell or Trap from your graveyard. Immediately after this effect resolves, tribute summon this card. This is a quick effect. So what that means is you could pretty much tribute summon him on your opponent's turn. Uh, just to pull off some other effects. So you might want to do that. You might want to pull out one of your little guys and then during your opponent's turn all of a sudden pull this thing out. So, pretty good. And uh, that's it for the monsters. Uh, so for the spell cards, I have, well, obviously, the one reinforcement of the army. I would definitely play two of these if I could, but uh, with the current ban list, you're only allowed one. So, kind of stuck at one. But primarily your targets are uh, this guy. You're gonna wanna pull him out. Or if you have to, you can pull out Spell Striker. So it's, it's really up to, uh, how your deck is going and, and how far you are in the game. Um, Monster Reborn, because I always put that in a deck pretty much if there's room for it. Um, Terraforming, because this is going to get your key card and why this deck is called Domain Monarchs in the first place. And that's to pull out your Domain of the True Monarchs. Um, and this is what helps this deck shut down a lot of other decks. So if, you're, if your opponent's deck is relying heavily on special summoning from the extra deck, this is going to shut them down as long as you have your Monarch on the field or any Tribute Summon monster. So uh, once you get this field spell out, your, your opening play, if you could pull that off and then get either this guy or this guy or even one of these guys out on the field, you almost locked your opponent out of their plays uh, because they cannot special summon from the extra deck and they, their monster effects have uh, can't be activated, or they can't even special summon. So they're kind of in a you know in a, in a big predicament at this point. Uh, they're going to have to either get rid of this, or they're going to have to get rid of the the monster somehow. Um, and this also has some more effects if 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 it wasn't broken enough. Uh, if a tribute summon monster you control attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack during the damage calculation, so it gives an attack boost. And then once per turn, you could reduce the level of one monster with 2,800 attack and 1,000 defense um, in your hand by two uh, This at, until the end of this turn. Uh, so basically what, what that means is these big guys now become a single tribute. So you can actually tribute these guys off with one tribute instead of two. And that's really what you're going to want to do when you pull those guys off. On to some more uh, Monarch Spell and Trap stuff. Uh, three Tenacity of the Monarchs. I think pretty standard in every Monarch deck. This is your searcher of the deck. Uh, all you have to do is reveal one monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense. So essentially one of these guys. Or for uh, one with 2800 attack and 1000 defense. So one of these guys. So you got plenty of targets to work with. Just keep in mind that uh, your Vanity's Fiend will not work with this card because he's got 1200 defense. So that kind of sucks. Um, then, once you uh, reveal that, you add a Monarch Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand, except itself. So you can't uh, you can't grab this card. Um, and you can only activate it once per turn, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. So usually what you grab with this card would be this one. Uh, Pantheism of the Monarchs, I believe it's said. Uh, so this one, you send one Monarch Spell or Trap from your hand to the graveyard. So if you have another Tenacity that's dead in your hand, you'd probably do that. And then you draw two cards. Then you could banish this card from your graveyard, reveal three Monarch Spell or Traps from your deck. Uh, your opponent chooses one, so chances are, if you need your domain, you're going to pull that out. Um, it, there's a lot of things you could possibly do here. Um, and if you grab three of the same one, because your opponent chooses one, and adds it to your hand and then you shuffle the rest back into your deck and then 
you can, um, well, then you can only use the effect once per turn. Uh, so it's actually a pretty good spell, and you can, uh, the part where you can banish it, it's, it's just ridiculously good. Um, so it's, it's a draw card, and it actually serves as a graveyard to fetch another card. And then there's a, and again, this is only at one, so I only play one. Uh, Return of the Monarchs. Uh, you can special summon monsters from your, you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck. Again, uh, not a big deal, because you don't have one. And when you tribute summon a monster, you can activate one of these effects, and that is to add from your deck to your hand one monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense, with a different name than the tribute summon monster, so you could search out something different. Um, or you can add from your deck to your hand one monster with 2800 attack and 1000 defense with a different name than the one that's tribute summon. Um, so it pretty much is, is another searcher. So you're just going to be searching off your monarchs like crazy. So I, I play two of these just, just to help with consistency. Now to help your monarchs and your, your tribute summons stay around, I'm playing two March of the Monarchs. Uh, I've seen some people build uh, with one. And some go with three. I mean, I like it because it's protection. Uh, basically, tribute summon monsters you control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Um, and you cannot special summon from your extra deck, which is, again, no big deal. But if you have your domain out, March of the Monarch out, and, you know, one of these guys, your opponent's going to have a hard time beating this board. Um, they, they better have a lot of spell and trap destruction. And rounding out the Monarch spells... To Monarch Storm Forth. This kind of acts as your monster removal. Also helps you to uh, bring out your your tribute summon cards. Essentially, it just allows you to use one of your opponent's monsters as a tribute summon. Um, you can only use this once one of these cards per turn, and uh, it prevents you from special summoning from the extra deck as well. And for some non-monarchs, uh, two MSTs just to deal with back row. Um, I was going to go to three as well, but um, I don't know. I'll try two. So that's the spells. Last but not least, we got the traps. Uh, so I got two, the Prime Monarch. Uh, this is an interesting trap. It's continuous. Um, it's a target for Curez if you need to blow it up and draw a card. Um, but once per turn, you can shuffle or target two Monarch spell or trap cards in your graveyard and shuffle them into your deck, then draw one card. So it kind of brings some of your cards back into your deck and it gives you an extra card. And uh, then you can also banish this card. Uh, you could banish one other Monarch spell or trap from your graveyard, special summon this card in defense position as a normal monster. So if it's in your graveyard, you could turn it into a normal monster just by banishing a uh, Monarch spell or trap from your graveyard. And then you might use it to tribute summon or just as a wall just to you know protect yourself so i went with two of these i was almost going to go with three but i decided for space let's just stick with two escalation of the monarchs this is okay uh, it allows you to kind of do this guy's effect uh where he can special summon on your opponent's turn so you can summon one of your little guys and then when your opponent it's your opponent's turn you flip this over um, and uh, during your opponent's main phase or your opponent's battle phase, you can immediately, after this effect resolves, tribute summon a one monster. So another good trick is to also have um, your Monarch Storm forth. So you would essentially activate this when they summon a monster. Then you'd flip this over, and then you contribute that monster and then summon one of your Monarchs just to get it onto the field. So that's a pretty good, you know... Uh, could surprise your opponent. And just one Call of the Haunted. I like Call of the Haunted because it can work in several ways. Uh, one of my favorite moves was always to like bring out um, Kurez. Because <laughs> you could bring it out. You could blow up stuff like immediately uh, if you need to. You can blow up your own back row. You could blow up these two cards if you want and you get two cards. So I always kind of like doing that. Anyways, that's pretty much the Monarch deck. Um, that I've been playing, uh, you know, there's a few cards in here like Spell Striker. I don't see, I don't think many people use this one in a Monarch deck, but uh, you know, it's just my little bit of tech. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Throw some comments down below what you think. I always like to hear your thoughts, and uh, hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.